I'll go right back. Oh, watch, now they're going to change direction. Don't do that. We just want to have a look at you. Okay, we'll stop here. That'll do. Here comes a little one. Racing stripes coming through there. I reckon that this little zebra needs to go and meet that hyena, that fluffy hyena we saw this morning. Look at that. <laughs> He's even squealing a little bit too. There's something biting your bottom. And look, you see that tail's moving quite vigorously. I think it's maybe been stung. Video jumper, you said it is a playful little zebby. I actually think now that it's, it's being bitten and that's why it's resorting to cavorting around like this. Show me being stung. It wouldn't surprise me. Let me move back again for you. Sorry, Seb, we're doing a lot of maneuvering around here. But the zebra obviously haven't got the manual or haven't read the Sabi Sands guideline to Safari Live. Hi. No, no, it's okay. Relax. No, they're not relaxing. Don't be silly now. It's just us. See, now I know straight away that this is not the McCurdy Hurdy because they would never do this to me. They would never turn their backs to us and run away like that. And that, that is actually a stick that's going across your screen. I just switched off because they weren't 100% happy with us, but now they're, they've forgotten that we're even here and they should actually walk right past us. But shame, yes, I think that little one was having a bit of trouble. I'll never forget the one day I had a rather large thoroughbred. His name was London Class, and he was 17 two hands. Can you believe that? Oh, I'll move out. They're coming across the road. He was an absolute monster. When I bought him uh, at, as a four-year-old, I didn't think he was going to mature to that size. I learnt my lesson that 17 two hands is a horse that is way too big for me to ride. Anyway, he was naughty. He was very uh, sort of hot-tempered. Uh, it was typical of his sire. Um, and of London News, it's a, was, he was a very good racehorse actually and they were all quite fiery and he had a very fiery personality but I'm digressing now. The one day I was having a, a jumping lesson and a bee stung in between his legs and he bucked like a bronco. Now he was known for the best bucks in that stable yard. He bucked every single person off, even some top top riders. Oh that's an injury and, and yes um, I fell off so I know it's not pleasant when a horse gets stung by a bee. Now, I think this is zebra, looks like it's been fighting a little bit, don't you think? Looks like there's kind of quite a few scratches there. But that looks like a typical hoof to the rear end. That does not look like uh, it's been attacked by a lion or anything because I've had to spray much purple spray on injuries just like that. It looks exactly like it has been kicked and zebras do get a bit rowdy at times. Like I was saying, they become very, very playful and if, if you've ever seen a zebra fight before, wow, they, they can get quite aggressive. Yes, I know you keep running back to mom for reassurance and look at that tail go. Come here. If you come to me, I'll have a look for you and there's something biting you. That's mean of the flies too, picking on the young foal. <laughs> That's terrible of them. But what a lovely zebra sighting. I'm just shifting out of the way now. It's always interesting the positions we have to lay in to make sure we don't get our heads in. Sometimes my ponytail creeps into the frame. I can't help it. It has a mind of its own. Little one, have you settled down now? It doesn't seem to be sort of tucking its legs underneath itself like it was earlier and all of the zebra's tails are swatting quite a bit, so the biting flies are definitely around. Whee! And even at a young age, I'll tell you right now that that would hurt if it kicked you like that. Obviously, it hasn't quite learned. Its tail's obviously not quite long enough yet to reach to those hard-to-get places, so a combination of bucking and shaking. <laughs> put your left right... Well, put your left foot out, put your left foot in, put your left foot out and shake it all about. <laughs> <laughs> it is so sweet, but I also feel a little bit sorry for it. It's not enjoying itself. It's not very comfortable. Go and run through a tree, little one, and that's something that the zebra has still got to learn. Oh! <laughs> Bucking bronco. I think you're in the wrong industry. You shouldn't be a safari wilderness zebra. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, my goodness! Shame, little one, and we watched that happen. I won't laugh at you. That was terrible. But it bounces back up, as you can see. Oh, no. 
Careful, you're going to slip again. But you saw it slipped right there. It fell, it got back up. It didn't hurt itself. They are so resilient, these little creatures. And it, it is just going to have to learn. Now, curious one, you've said that you enjoy active zebra sightings. So do I. You, it's hard not to. And we don't get to see active sightings like this too often. I feel bad, though, because I am laughing at the expense of the zebra. But I reckon everybody in the herd is probably having a bit of a giggle, too. You'll get there. Your tail will grow long enough one day. You'll be able to sort those flies out. I think it's a combination of, a, of the flies biting it and maybe a little sugar boost. It's got all this excess energy. It's a bit like me. It gets distracted. Oh, that smells nice. I'm going to eat here, and then I'm going to run and buck and chase all sorts of things again. How great is this? We have had some serious luck, Sebastian. So Sebastian and I were talking this morning. I was distraught because I'd left my watch at home, and I've been waiting for this watch for such a long time. And I thought, I said, oh, no, Sebastian, we're not going to have good luck today because I left my lucky watch behind. It's not the watch that's lucky. So now we need to figure out what item that I'm wearing is very lucky because I didn't have this kind of luck last cycle or the cycle before. We actually had a drought when it came to animals. But it's changing, and I'm quite happy with that. So I, I got given a necklace, and I also got given a bangle. A rhino bangle. Maybe it's the rhino bangle, this one. That's actually... Oh, sorry, did you want to look at it? Yes. I'll just show you my pretty beads. There's my pretty beads. And it's got a little rhino on, if you'd like to see. It says protect. It's upside down, though. So maybe it's that. Possibly that's bringing me all of my good luck. I'm not sure. Anyways, <laughs> it's now turned into Safari Lives Fashion Edition. Let's move up just a little bit. I do want to just maybe pull off of the road in case there is a car that comes from behind because this is we are on Gauri Main and that's why you are seeing the power lines in case you're wondering. It's not a zoo. We do have to bring electricity um, to this area. Actually, let me go up here. No, we can't go up here because this is not Juma anymore. We're trapped. We just, okay, we're going to block the whole road. That's what we're going to do. And we'll move when somebody gets here. But very cool. It's been a wonderful afternoon. Hopefully it's going to be another game drive that we're basically going to blink my eyes and open them again. And the Alice will be doing the countdown with me. It'll go really fast. I love the drives that are just so busy that you don't even get to check the time. Yes, stamp your feet, kick your legs, swish your tail. Those are all the right steps to trying to get rid of little insects. Ooh. Now, Karsten from Denmark, you're wondering at what age is a zebra considered fully grown? Um, I would say around maybe three or four, no, well, well, a horse becomes fully grown in about six if it's a thoroughbred. If it's a warm blood, it's normally later, about seven, eight years old. They're normally only maturing at that sort of age. So zebra, I'm going to go with maybe four or five years old. Uh, the females will be able to uh, to breed at that age. And I don't think they'll be doing too much more growing. Even, even with a stallion, oh, careful, might just fill out slightly more. So it won't get too much taller. They normally would have reached their, their sort of height by, their, by then, sorry. Shame, little one. Look at it, breathing quite heavily now. It's obviously warm and it has been running around, bucking and racing around in circles, and I'm sure swishing your tail like that too can use quite a bit of energy, but luckily there's still an abundance of food around. I wouldn't like to watch a zebra do that if we were in the peak of the drought, because you just use all your resources, all your fuel that you've been storing, and you don't want to do that when there's not a lot of food around, but that little zebra hasn't got to worry about a thing, because it will still be suckling, and at least mom will be able to keep producing enough milk. That's another old injury, now, that one, that big cut along that zebra's back, sure, actually looks like it was quite deep at one point. Now, that could, again, could be from a lion. It could be running and cutting itself on a branch, a low-hanging branch. That can happen, too. I've also had a horse that's done that. It could be from a number of different things. But it seems as though they've been fighting quite a bit in this herd. Now, Mr. P, all the way from Canada, you're wondering if a zebra has ever killed a lion by kicking it. 
Um, most certainly, I'm sure that's definitely happened. I haven't ever seen it happen before, but I know that it doesn't look like much when that young foal was kicking about. But just put that behind a big stallion and you can imagine what that must feel like. And they've also got exceptionally sharp teeth. So biting, kicking, very, very powerful hindquarters. One blow to a lion's head or to a lion's jaw um, could easily incapacitate it. So it could break a lion's jaw and there's no coming back from a broken jaw right here because you won't be able to eat. And in order to survive, you need to eat, of course. Um, or even breaking a lion's leg in the ribs, you know, um, getting internal bleeding, that's a possibility. So all the animals out here have got a chance at defending themselves against predators. That's why the antelope have horns, like we've just mentioned, the zebra have got very powerful hindquarters and very sharp teeth. Giraffe have got a very powerful kick too. And wildebeest and buffalo, they've got horns to try and protect themselves. They've all got natural camouflage. So they do definitely have a chance at, at getting away. But unfortunately, that's not always the case. Most of the time, the predators do succeed and do win. At this time of the year though, the predators have a better chance. In the summer months, once the animals start recovering from uh, winter, when the food was less and we've just come out of a drought, uh, they really are quite fit and strong. Right, we'll see what else these ever get up to, otherwise we're going to continue on our leopard search and hopefully we'll find a spotted cat.